name is Irena Wiesthaler. I am uh, together with Roberta Perna, Naval uh, Shahariar, and Sebastian Umpieres, um, and Daniela Vintila, the co convener of the standing group ECPR Standing Group on Migration and Citizenship. And we are very honored and happy to uh, have Professor Engin Ising today with us. Uh, he, has, he is Professor Meritus in International Politics from the Queen Mary University of London. Um, and he has been working um, a lot on imperial and colonial practices uh, worldwide. Um, his work has dealt with the agency of people and how they constitute themselves as international citizens. And today he will talk to us about planetary citizenship, about how he defines planetary, and about the implications that that might have on uh, theories of political agency. So, Professor um, Isin, the floor is yours for the next 30 minutes. Thanks very much, uh, Verena, and, and thanks very much for the uh, uh, standing committee organizers, Nawal, Roberta, and others for inviting me. I'm, I'm honored and, and really uh, happy to be here sharing some thoughts with you that I've been developing over the last uh, few years, in some ways also revisiting some of my older work um, on, on the question of the earth environment and environmental politics. Uh, some of you will, will know or, or may not know that I was also trained at one stage as a geographer and particularly I had um, I had training in also anarchist geography, people like Elise Reclu, um, Godwin and Kropotkin and myriad others. So I'm revisiting some of that work. Um, the concept that I'm trying to um, articulate and I wanna emphasize trying, um, so there's nothing um, sort of hard and fast about the concept of planetary citizenship that I'm able to offer you at this point but also planetary citizenship, like other concepts of citizenship that, that have been proposed, uh, it essentially is performative citizenship in the sense that people with their activities bring it into being. So conceptual development is about understanding what people are doing rather than theoretically in the abstract proposing uh, an idea. So a lot of it is informed by what I observe as people are reacting and interacting with the developing ideas about the earth and the, and the human's role um, in it. Um, so without further ado, we can just make some uh, comparisons with other forms of performative citizenship and then say a little bit about why insist on the concept of planetary citizenship? And then a couple of methodological remarks and two or three examples or, or, or propositions to think about uh, the conditions of planetary citizenship in the sense that under what conditions we think um, that it might have, it might have an enduring potential. So we are, of course, as soon as we use a term like planetary citizenship, um, I have been speaking about uh, this for several lectures now in different contexts. Uh, one of the things that I notice is immediately an analogy or similarity is established between other variants that we know that goes beyond the nation states, such as transnational citizenship, cosmopolitan citizenship, world citizenship, and global citizenship. Uh, of course, these variants have proposed various ways of understanding in what ways and how um, we might be able to imagine citizenship um, dislodged from its uh, nation state boundaries and, and uh, investigate and see and perform ourselves across through and beyond the boundaries and borders set by the nation states. This has, of course, significance for ideas about international migration, international immigration, but also about international politics and world politics in general. 
um, to what extent we can imagine cosmopolitanism, transnationalism, world citizenship, and global citizenship. Now, the first suggestion I want to make today is that planetary citizenship is, although in kind, is like these forms of performative citizenship, but it also makes a radical break with them. Uh, and I want to be able to highlight what that radical break is. Uh, so first, I'm going to say a lot more, but just very quickly to highlight a couple of things. First, I do believe that planetary, unlike this other, these other variants, is not a geopolitical scale or even a historical period like age, era, epoch, or even a geological period, um, although Anthropocene is being proposed and considered, uh, the, the planetary both subsumes and goes beyond the notion of only thinking in terms of uh, the Anthropocene. Um, then how do we approach understanding the planetary? How do we uh, establish some methodological and, and conceptual um, principles where we don't immediately begin to define as it is already given, but it is something that is being brought into being uh, through various practices, various and immense range of different um, activities uh, by humans and non-humans. Uh, so before we immediately jump into uh, this concept, planetary, and then begin comparing it with transnational world cosmopolitan, uh, how can we pause, step uh, back, and then think about how we want to approach it? Now, my first proposition on this is that I want to use this concept planetary. Let's approach it as an imaginary. It's, uh, but imaginary also runs risks of being understood in particular ways. Imaginary, as soon as I use the term imaginary, uh, for example, it can be compared uh, to ideology or episteme or simply imagination. Um, some people may relate it to myth. Some people may think of it as fantasy. Some people might think of it as illusion, fiction. I don't believe that imaginary that I want to propose is a distorted and unreal version of something, but a socially instituted construct. So the social institution of imaginary is with a, 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 um, a particular um, uh, reworking of the concept of imaginary in psychoanalysis and political theory that I reach this. Uh, if it is not in any one of these that I mentioned, that it is not a, a myth, illusion, or fantasy. What do I mean by social institution of imaginary? Before even I start saying something about the planetary. Now, social institution of imaginary in the way in which I want to propose involves symbolic and material production, not just simply symbolic production of ideas, ideologies, and, and so on, but also material production of organization of uh, practices material um, things and ordering them. These range from arts and sciences to politics and, and religion and traversing diverse human practices. So the production of an imaginary though, although it's purposeful, purposeful but it is, it is not voluntary, it is involuntary in the sense that not one single force, what single group, one social class or social group is able to dominate and establish hegemony over it. So it is, it is a, a collective production uh, over which we struggle. That's why I use the term social institution of an imaginary. Um, an imaginary is, if you understand it as a socially instituted construct, it, is, it can be considered also a description through which we organize our collective will, uh, knowledges, and response to, respond to questions of how we live our lives. We, we take clues and orient toward these various socially instituted imaginaries 
to take clues and 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 um, organize the way in which we conduct ourselves in life. Uh, various ethical propositions, various political propositions that we engage in, is always takes clues from imaginaries about what it means to be human, what it means to be political, what it means to be in any one of these categories and 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 classes in which and through which we conduct ourselves. So there is a certain uh, orientation toward description through which we organize our collective will. Um, how are imaginaries socially instituted is a significant question. Of course, I, not, I cannot go into details about that, but I have already mentioned three elements, will, organization of collective will, um, knowledge, knowledge about ourselves, about others, about the conditions in which we find ourselves, um, both material and symbolic conditions in which we find ourselves, as well as various forms of acts, the things that we do, things that we perform in life. Uh, these imaginaries involve all these three forms. Now, this is generally about the institution of social imaginary. Um, I'm insisting on approaching with a robust development of a concept before we enter into an immediate definition of planetary, precisely because, as I mentioned, I don't want uh, our thinking to lapse back into scalar thinking. Um, it is yet another scale in, in the agenda. It is analogous and similar to cosmopolitan citizenship and, and so on. I want to be able to distinguish the planetary from the social institution of other imaginaries. Uh, cosmopolitanism, internationalism are also imaginaries and constituted like the planetary. So what are the things that we can say about the planetary that makes it distinct and particularly, as I said, um, makes a radical break in some ways. It is, a, it is a rupture of the given understanding of how we relate um, our current condition as as human beings. Now, what we have witnessed in the 21st century can be said it's the intensification of the idea that the earth is becoming uninhabitable, uninhabitable by the activities of humans. Therefore, the proposed idea of Anthropocene of identifying this period as distinct from Holocene, 11,000 years of human history, is, has come to an end, and now we actually identify uh, that Anthropocene starts. Um, I'm not necessarily investing uncritically in the concept, but I am suggesting that it is part of the building of the planetary imaginary. There is this intensification of the idea that the Earth is becoming uninhabitable, and that we may have limited time to be able to divert or mitigate against the possibility of this uninhabitable um, earth, and this is primarily caused by us humans. Now, when this started and whether it can be averted has become not only the concern of science and humanities, but of course, uh, of course, the concern for both peoples and governments. It has become a concern for arts, where in film, fiction, science fiction, poetry, photography, painting, dance, theater, and music responding to and participating in the production of a planetary imaginary, responding to that specific question, we are being interpolated. Has the earth become, or is the earth becoming rapidly uninhabitable by the activities that humans uh, cause? Um, various religious religions ranging from Buddhism and Taoism, if not Islam, Judaism, and Christianity also have been brought. Um, uh, to reflect on the present predicament of the earth. The imaginary has involved the formation of numerous movements, social movements as well, organization of various uh, scope and depth. It would be too numerous for me to cite number of movements that take the condition of the earth, the planetary condition, as their primary uh, axis of uh, action. Um, so now this is not to say uh, that imaginary um, is, is a unified 
or a coherent construct, but it is fair to say that it has become in the 21st century a planet, a question of the planet as the overriding um, uh, question. So if it's not coherent and unified, what is it then? It is the object of struggles, obvious, to shape, name, organize, and define it by interpolating and inviting people into embodying its concerns. So the planetary imaginary is being constructed as we speak, and it is not ideology, fantasy, imagination, but it is all of these things as well, but it traverses them in its dispersions, dissemination, uptakes, and interpolation that is not reducible to any one or combination of them. Um, so it is important to just sort of outline in that sense that planetary is becoming that object of orientation uh, for us and ranging from um, very young activists to, to, um, to activists who have been involved in many other struggles crossing between anti-racist, anti-fascist, um, anti-imperialist, anti-colonial activities are also merging and connecting with the question of the inhabitability of the earth. Um, so in one way, we can say that in fact, uh, planetary imaginary is planetary because it urges us to resist seeing like the state empire or corporation. What I mean by that is that the current political and economic differentiations of the earth, when the concern becomes the earth and its inhabitability, um, these political differentiations become secondary, if not impediment to relating to ourselves as having to deal with a common habitat. The commonness that it brings us is ontologically significant to understand the earth and its ability to um, support our activities. Now, once we make that um, step toward understanding the planetary that is beyond seeing like the state empire and corporation, this is where I strongly suggest that is not like cosmopolitan world or international citizenship, because these citizenships are still lodged in the concept of the political differentiation and political organization of um, a world order, as it were. Its constitutive elements could be international organizations, but still the state is at the center of it. It could be cosmopolitan, but still its demands are made on the states. With the planetary, there's a break is being made. The, the source of authority is not coming from any given existing political differentiation, although demands are made on it. Now, I think that simultaneously places human species, our species, in a predicament for interspecies solidarity for being the species having now had the decisive impact on this common habitat. We are in an unenviable situation where on the one hand, we have to accept our responsibility toward the earth. And yet at the same time, we have to learn to live with it in a decentered way. We have to accept at one level, our consequentiality uh, the consequences of our activities as, as the central story. And yet we have to learn to decenter ourselves in entering into relationship with other species. Therefore, it's important to stress that planetary imaginary, as far as I see it is being formed, is neither about human species themselves alone, nor about the planet Earth itself, but the planet Earth as the common habitat of all planetary species and peoples. And I think the failure to recognize this, probably I would make a strong statement, statement abdication of responsibility. N failure to understand that this is the predicament in which we find ourselves. Um, now, 
I can, of course, go on and, and further elaborate on the ways in which the planetary is making uh, us um, a, a placing it itself, placing us in this predicament. I'm going to make three propositions along the lines of willing, knowing, and acting. What kinds of openings that it is providing for us to think about planetary citizenship? So these propositions are not fully tested yet. I'm working on them. And I have condensed about 12 propositions that I have about the planetary um, movements and the planetary condition into about three in here, three categories. Um, but I'm going to just go through them uh, for us to be able to discuss later on. And then I want to come back to the notion of the planetary citizenship. If this is the predicament in which we find ourselves, why insist on using citizenship as a concept which is itself lodged in the political differentiation and political history that we are talking about? Um, I want to address that. I want to end by addressing that question. But let me go back to three propositions and, and just sort of give you a sense of what does it involve? What kinds of um, elements that we can identify in this predicament? Uh, and indeed, the three categories, three propositions of willing, knowing, and acting in these uh, three domains. Now, in my view, planetary imaginer provokes and mobilizes interspecies negotiation, a relationship with ourselves, with other peoples, and with other species, and I even include with other planets. My argument is that planetary imaginary, discloses domination of peoples by peoples, species by species, and planets by planets. Um, one of the things that has contributed to the development of planetary imaginary is particularly historical scholarship. Um, scholars have massively expanded the scope of their investigations to not only 5,000, 8,000 and 11,000 year scope and histories, but even 60,000 and 200,000 200, year history of humans. So now in uh, deep histories, for example, what we find the emerging narratives about how humans were first formed uh, 200,000 years ago, and roughly about 100,000 years ago, they started first their migrations. 60,000 years ago, they actually moved across continents. 40,000 years ago, they moved across um, um, uh, the uh, uh, almost all continents. And, and then 11,000 years ago, with the invention of ag agriculture, domestication of animals and domestication of land, domestication of the earth, invention of irrigation, as well as the domestication of peoples by peoples, the first emergence of slavery. Now we are reading these narratives that are much, much farther and deeper reaching than even a generation ago. Uh, we are in the middle of a significant transformation of our understanding of ourselves and our history as humans and our relationship with our species um, in the last 200,000 years. This kind of knowledge was not available even a generation ago, and it has accelerated. Um, and the planetary imaginary also attunes us as much as we learn about our own uh, planet and our own history in it, attunes us toward other planets. Planetary movements, for example, recognize that they are movements within an interplanetary or interstellar space. Uh, the planet Earth does not have a monopoly on being a planet. If planetary movements orient toward the planet Earth with care, uh, this also places planetary species in relationship to interplanetary and yet unknown species. We are developing new ethical relationship with uh, other planets. Planetary movements disclose that humans have already had an impact on other planets. I am sure you know about the space junk that we have created. 
that is not without consequences. And therefore, planetary movements and the planetary imaginary that they are involving in production of disclose um, or, or reject colonization of space for military and corporate conquest. There is no other way of relating to the Anthropocene and the predicament we find ourselves without rejecting militarism of or militarization of space. This is because we already know the genocidal consequences of terra nullius, nobody's land, European colonization and European expansion and its impact on indigenous peoples and its impact on the production and distribution of us human slavery. Given that now we are relating ourselves to these histories, planetary imaginary urges us to resist military state and corporate colonization of interstellar space. This is really a significant aspect of thinking about uh, the earth. This is not, for example, being against war because we want peace. We are against war because we are against domination of people by people, species by species, and the planets by planets. There is a fundamental rejection of domination that has um, determined the fate of humans, at least in the last 5,000 years, perhaps longer. So this is in terms of the organizing our collective will and what is it that we are attuning to when we begin to think of the earth as our common habitat. Now, when I say our, does not mean that only humans. It involves all other human, uh, all other species on the earth and the materiality of the earth and other planets as well. And the species we have yet to know and that we have had already negative impacts on them, one can already establish. In terms of knowing, in terms of organization of our knowledge, what does it mean now uh, under these conditions, the production of knowledge, um, if you like production of post-human knowledge, transhuman knowledge, knowledge in a period where we are under this uh, predicament. Um, I think planetary imaginary organizes negotiated knowledges. We are increasingly becoming attuned to art, sciences, philosophies, religions, not necessarily being superior to one another in a hierarchical way, but actually without being able to reflect on the planetary condition without depending on the others. In other words, there is a sense that it is a collective effort of negotiating knowledges, truth-telling conventions. Uh, for planetary imaginary, all conventions of truth-telling stand in dialogue with each other rather than in a hierarchical way saying that science dominates or philosophy dominates or religion dominates. They have to enter into, into negotiation with one another. So truth telling conventions such as sciences, arts, humanities, activism, journalism, spirituality are solidaristic yet agonistic conventions. The authority and legitimacy of a convention derives from how and under what conditions its truth-telling reveals injustices uh, suffered by domination of a people, a species, and a planet, working out what and how to know and who can know is a dialogue between these conventions already traversing justice and injustice. We are increasing the understanding that domination of one convention leads to domination of a people over another. These conventions of truth telling don't stand outside but inside the planetary imaginary. This does not diminish the principle of objectivity for those who are in sciences, but it resignifies it. What does it mean to be objective is being rethought. Um, so in terms of organizing our knowledges, we are also on the threshold of an epistemic significant transformation. Um, that's what planetary imaginary uh, forces us to do, and we are responding. Um, for example, there is, there is already, if you follow avant-garde, cutting-edge science, 
philosophy, science fiction, um, change forms of spirituality, drawing from various sources. There is already the rejection of a difference between nature and culture. And there's a, a, a elimination of the difference between natural and human sciences. There is a, a different organization of epistemic conditions. Now, given that these are willing and knowing, conditions of willing and knowing, um, just wanna say a little bit about activism and acting. Um, obviously we know that what planetary imaginary presents itself most immediately to us actually through the acts of those who perform themselves as planetary activists. Let's leave citizenship out. I will come back to that. Let's say planetary activists. We know that many people have invested themselves in, um, for example, drawing attention to the fact that uninhabitability of the earth is becoming a serious concern. There are critical zones. Uh, there are critical uh, boundaries. These thresholds have, have been already reached uh, at certain um, uh, segments and the concern and the care for the earth has already mobilized number of people and activities, but along the lines that I suggested that bringing in a, a general attunement or orientation toward also being against all forms of domination, um, patriarchal domination, racial domination, sexual domination, uh, species domination, ability domination, all these forms of domination come under significant stress because of our now ability to know about at least the last 200,000 year history of uh, humanity. And with planetary activism, we also learn various things that they are, for example, non-hierarchical, not only non-patriarchal, uh, um, 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 none uh, sort of a um, uh, temporal and, and so on. And I'm going to wrap up in a couple of minutes uh, uh, after this. Um, the, the, uh, one of the things we learn in planetary activism is that it's variable intensities through these nine hierarchical, neither horizontal nor vertical forms of organizations. They work through variable intensities they ebb and flow in continuous but variable uh, organizations. And these movements, activists generate restless intensities, but varying these intensities, rest, evade, slow, and then quicken and intensify again in an ongoing continuous manner. Planetary imaginary is making these kinds of possible because they are not constricted by the political differentiations and borders and institutions that define the world order in which we live. Uh, they provide transversal connections with and transform decolonial, indigenous, feminist, queer, ecological, migrant, anti-fascist, anti-imperialist, and anti-colonial movements. For the first time we are seeing actually allyship, transversal allyship being the orientation of uh, planetary activism. Now, I'm going to just end um, with very quickly on the question of planetary citizenship. I said that I would come back to this, and I'm going to uh, confront, if you like, or respond to a question that I'm asked already several times. Why then, if the planetary activism and the imaginary that's associated with it, along with movements, are increasingly urging us on a planetary feeling, planetary thought, and planetary care that really goes beyond borders and boundaries that are imposed on the planet and recognizes that actually those borders and boundaries are genuine impediment to rendering the earth habitable, um, um, then why use a concept, citizenship, that is essentially political and, and has the baggage and genealogy of these institutions that planetary thought is actually, or planet imaginary is uh, calling into question. Of course, it depends on what we mean by citizenship. Um, if you go back to um, my insistence 
that citizenship always should be considered as um, a performative, I don't necessarily accept that citizenship is necessarily uh, belongs to that political lineage of the nation state. Um, it has much deeper, uh, older historical roots and genealogies. And above all, citizenship is a revolutionary subject position. Emancipation from domination has been always in its known history of citizenship is about bringing about a revolutionary subject into existence and organizing the acts of that revolutionary subject. Therefore, and two elements of planet uh, um, citizenship as revolutionary subjectivity involves acting without authorization that brings citizenship into being and acting without membership it opens up those possibilities. So if we consider that citizenship is a revolutionary subjectivity, I don't see an essential paradox here coupling planetary citizenship. In fact, I would suggest that planetary citizenship might be the first truly radical concept of performative citizenship where it really performs citizenship without authorization, citizenship without membership, without necessarily uh, taking its cue from any established political authority, but gaining its legitimacy from both the incipient planetary imaginary and the planetary movements that are associated with it. Therefore, the militancy of planetary citizenship is about emancipation of subjugated knowledges and having created the conditions of possibility of planetary citizenship, now a kind of citizenship we could not imagine uh, up until now, the elements of it now are in the making. And that's why I invested myself to think more about the possibilities of planetary citizenship. <laughs>